It was wrong. It was foolish. It was inexcusable. The McGreevy shocker, a very personal public confession, forces the New Jersey governor to resign. Where is this man, Al Sadr, and what is his fate? The latest on the fighting in Najaf. And Charlie's coming first to Florida, then he's headed our way. These stories and more making news today in New York. Good morning, everyone. 6 a.m. on a Friday morning. Welcome. I'm Darlene Rodriguez. Good morning to you. I'm Rob Morrison. We'll have much more on Governor McGreevy's announcement in just a moment. But as we mentioned, Hurricane Charlie bearing down on Florida right now. Florida right now. And then we also have Bonnie, too. That's on the mid-Atlantic coast. So very heavy rain is moving up. Let's check it out right now. Light rain in the city. It's 74 degrees right now. The roads are slick here and there. Let's check out what's going on right now. Temperature-wise, basically in the 70s. That's not the problem. Problem is to the south of New York right now along the Virginia. See it lighting up. That is the remnants of Tropical Storm Bonnie. That will get here late this morning, early this afternoon. One to three as much as four inches of rain from that system. And then we have to deal with Charlie and that happens by Saturday night into Sunday. This is what you could expect. Heavy storms, possibility of damaging wind and then the second storm by Saturday night into Sunday. Full details on the five day coming up in a little bit. All right, Joe, thank you very much. We, of course, begin with the stunning announcement from Trenton. New Jersey Governor Jim McGreevy resigning from office after admitting to a gay affair with a former aide. We have live team coverage this morning. Christopher King in Hoboken with reaction from voters. But we begin with details of the announcement and what to expect today. Tim Minton live in Trenton. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Rob. There had been rumors uh, all day yesterday. The media was gathering outside the governor's office and then signs that something remarkable was coming when a parade of visitors began to arrive. The first to find out for sure were staff and family allowed past troopers barring executive chamber doors. Minutes later, just past 4 p.m., the governor revealed his secrets one by one to the world. My truth is that I am a gay American, and I am blessed to live in the greatest nation, with the tradition of civil liberties, the greatest tradition of civil liberties in the world, and a country which provides so much to its people. Yet, because of the pain and suffering and anguish that I have caused to my beloved family, my parents, my wife, my friends, I would almost rather have this moment pass. It was stunning political drama. And as aides watched, it would quickly be topped. With Dina Matos McGreevy by his side, James McGreevy acknowledged his transgressions against her. I am also here today because, shamefully, I engaged in an adult consensual affair with another man, which violates my bonds of matrimony. It was wrong. It was foolish. It was inexcusable. Critical to the revelations, but unseen publicly, is one-time advisor Golan Sapel. State sources say it's Sapel's allegations of sexual harassment, expected to be detailed in a lawsuit that forced the governor to act. It makes little difference that as governor, I am gay. In fact, having the ability to truthfully set forth my identity might have enabled me to be more forthright in fulfilling and discharging my constitutional obligations. Given the circumstances surrounding the affair and its likely impact upon my family and my ability to govern, I have decided the right course of action is to resign. To the head of New Jersey's Black Ministers Council, it was inevitable now, avoidable earlier. I think his failure to be honest with the citizens of the state some years ago is what brought us to this point today. I think if he had said to the citizens of New Jersey eight years ago, I'm gay, I think he still could have been elected. State Senate President Dick Cody, the Democrat who's next in line to replace the Democrat who's leaving, issued a statement that says, my heart goes out to Jim McGreevy and his family during this difficult personal time. Others at the State House late Thursday were equally gentle. I witnessed one of the most courageous comments and one of the most courageous statements I've ever seen. It is a sad day for the people of this state, and I extend my thoughts and prayers to the McGreevy family. As presumably do those in the governor's inner circle, who after the 6 minute 17 second speech, sent him back to a forever changed private life with applause.
It's hard to imagine any wilder revelations today than yesterday, but the reality is that there is an air of uneasy anticipation here in the Capitol where sources inside the governor's office suggest that they just don't know exactly what might be filed in that lawsuit expected today either in the Mercer County Courthouse here or the Middlesex County Courthouse in New Brunswick. So they are waiting like everybody else for what comes next. Tim, the governor says his resignation will be effective November 15th. What's the significance of that date? The significance is that it means there would be no general election, that instead there would be a succession, one Democrat to another. The state Senate president, Dick Cody, would take over. The early reaction from Republican leaders here in Trenton yesterday was, uh, we're saddened by the chain of events, we wish the governor well, and no real strong uh, murmurs that they took issue with the date. But late yesterday, there was one indication when a senior Republican said that all of the people in that party expect to get together in days ahead to weigh their options, and it is still possible that there'll be some contentiousness about the governor's decision to wait three months before actually stepping down. All right, Tim Minton live in Trenton this morning. Thanks, Tim. New Jersey residents are just about evenly split on whether they agree with Governor McGreevy's decision to step down. A new WNBC Marist poll finds 41 percent in favor of McGreevy resigning on November 15th, but 35 percent say he should not resign, while 9 percent feel McGreevy should finish out his term but not seek re-election. The poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 5 percent. Now more reaction from New Jersey voters. Christopher King is at the PATH station in Hoboken. Christopher, good morning. Good morning, Darlene. It's dominating the headlines. Jim McGreevy quits. And of course, reaction here from New Jersey voters is mixed. Almost everyone is surprised, and it seems like almost everyone in New Jersey is talking about Jim McGreevy's bombshell announcement. It's a shame that he's resigning. You know, if he's gay, good for him. You know, why should he resign? Politicians have the same lives that we all have, and everybody's got something going on in their closet, I would guess. So this just came out in public. You don't see honesty, uh, at least uh, often in politics, and I think it was somewhat uh, refreshing. In Woodbridge, where Jim McGreevy was mayor before he became governor, the current mayor says McGreevy did the right thing in deciding to step down. It's probably the best thing that he could do to cause the least amount of confusion and heartache for not only himself and his family, but the entire uh, residents of the entire state of New Jersey. Across the river, Christine Quinn, an openly lesbian council member in Manhattan, says the governor's speech will trigger debate, which may help reduce homophobia. When we do that, we're going to make it so much easier for the other Jim McGreevy's out there in the world to come out of the closet and get out of the pain and torture they're in. Other advocates of gay and lesbian causes say that by going public, McGreevy quite simply made history. Many people come out as gay, few people come out on television as gay, and the governor of New Jersey has never come out on television as gay. It's, it's, it's a pretty unique experience. Some people applaud McGreevy's honesty. Others say he should step down. We are live in Hoboken. Christopher King, today in New York. Christopher, thank you. News Channel 4's Brian Thompson broke the McGreevy story yesterday afternoon. And coming up, we'll speak live with Brian, who has new information about Golan Sapel and the possible pending lawsuit against the New Jersey governor. That's coming up at 6.30. To Iraq now. Fighting has eased in Najaf, the holy city, the site of intense violence over the past couple days. There's also word that radical Shiite cleric Muqtada al-Sadr was hit by shrapnel in the chest and leg. Iraq's interior minister says negotiations are underway for al-Sadr to leave the shrine where he's believed to be hiding. In Florida now, hurricane shelters are already open as the Gulf Coast braces for Hurricane Charlie, a day after Tropical Storm Bonnie struck the panhandle. The storm's then expected to hit land in the Tampa Bay area this afternoon. Overnight, residents gathered their belongings and headed inland following a mandatory evacuation order. More than a half dozen nursing homes and at least three hospitals have been evacuated.